Now this is a great case here. This is one that I rarely get to see. What's going on? What why do we what are what are these things? So temporal artery. Yeah. I guess this is the only thing I feel like that looks like this that may come onto a derm path desk. And it's either the artery or uh, oh they got the vein, but this one looks like a true artery. It's nice and round, it's got a really thick vasculare and mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So this is like a florid, nice, probably untreated example of giant cell arteritis of the temporal artery or temporal, ar temporal arteritis. And like you said, it's got to be a muscular artery that they're biopsying. And then when they when they do this, then we cut it up. They get a, give us a length of temporal artery and we cut it up in the lab into small pieces. And then it gets embedded very carefully by a skilled skilled histotech to make sure that they all stand up right. I mean, that, that's not easy to do. That's really pretty impressive. They get these in there. I think sometimes they use like auger, like, you know, like the plates that you would run auger gel. I've, uh, I know some people will put them in that to get them kind of stabilized, but I've never actually done it. So I don't know. So to tell you're dealing with an artery, for one thing, like you said, having a real thick, well-formed muscle around it is probably an artery. Although remember veins can have thick muscular walls too. Um, and, but the best thing is looking for a nice, thick internal elastic lamina. And that's what you see right here. This purple line is just artifact. That's just a fold of the tissue. So ignore that. But see this little squiggly band here? It's a lot easier to see on a light microscope, not a scan slide, because if you flip your condenser, it, this is a kind of a three-dimensional structure. It's like separate from the, the tissue around it. And anything that's kind of got that three-dimensionality to it, um, flipping the condenser on the microscope will make it suddenly stand out and look kind of refractile. So a lot of times when I'm looking at these, you know, a lot of people like to do uh, VVG Verhoff Van Giesen elastic stain. I honestly feel like most of the time, looking carefully, I can actually see the elastic lamina just on, on, on the H&E and can see if it's disrupted. So um, the disruption's a little harder to show here, but basically we know we're dealing with the vessel and uh, an artery here because of the lamina. This, even without the arteritis, this is not a normal artery. The, the intima, the part on the inside towards the lumen side of the elastic lamina is super thick. It's really thick and it's got this kind of mixoid change. So this is intimal hyperplasia, which probably means that patients probably have longstanding hypertension and that's caused a reactive thickening of the, of the intima. So that's a lot thicker intima than normally I would see on a on an artery, okay? But the key here is that over here on this section, and there's some of it, there's some right here, for one, we'll go here. You can already see there's histiocytes and giant cells kind of attacking the wall of the vessel, and they're lining up here right around where the lamina, where that elastic lamina is. And there's gonna be lymphocytes with them too in this case. And here you can really see actually very nicely the giant cells, multinucleated giant cells, background loose mononuclear histiocytes, lymphocytes, and they're just destroying the medial part of the vessel, but you know, kind of right where the elastic lamina is between the intima and the media. And so this is a great example of giant cell arteritis. Now, a lot of times what I see when I see these biopsies, they almost always have been suspected to have temporal arteritis because they have facial pain and you know vision problems. And an astute physician recognizes that, tests them, finds that they've got an elevated C-reactive protein and SED rate, and they put them on steroids. And so within a not too long after steroids, they begin to lose all this inflammation. And then what we will see on after the inflammation has resolved, we can still tell that there's been temporal arteritis there probably because the elastic lamina gets distorted or dissolved in those areas. And so I look uh, carefully for, for disruption of the elastic lamina. And when I find that, even without giant cells, I'll say that it, it's consistent with treated uh, temporal arteritis or giant cell arteritis. So in any case, this is a really nice example. And I, I just, I think, I, I don't know if I've ever actually got to see one in practice that came in like this. They're almost, I think everyone I've ever seen has been treated before. So really, uh, really nice example here. And of course, it's an important thing to recognize in patients because, uh, you know, if you don't treat it, there's a potential for blindness. So, so serious problem if it's missed.